Hi, looks like we're live. If you guys are on with me and you can leave me a quick comment or wave or something so that I know you're here, that'd be great. It's just me tonight. All right, looks like we got a few. Okay, so I'm here for our weekly Q&A. If you're new here, then my name is Lindsay and I am one half of um, the duo that normally comes on for the Q&A. My husband, Jess, is not here tonight. He's out hauling some horses around. So you've just got me. Hi, ladies. Hi, Linda. Hi, Rose. Hi, Kim. Um, you just got me and I thought that that would be a good opportunity um, for me to answer a question that I get asked a lot, um, or actually I guess a series of questions that I get asked a lot, which is um, about my experience with postpartum arthritis. Um, and I've spoken a little bit about some of these things before, I've spoken a little bit about um, coming back to riding after having babies and, um, you know, address some of the questions around that before and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more tonight about pain in the saddle because I think that's where some of these questions are coming from is um is dealing with pain how do you deal with pain when it it hurts you to ride or it hurts you for the next couple of days um so if um you have experienced some pain or you are experiencing some pain when you're riding then um hopefully sharing my experience and and some of the tips that I have for you based on my experience and some of the experiences that I've shared with um, clients of mine hopefully you'll find that helpful um, if you want to check out the um, previous live that we did about coming back to um, riding horses after having babies then you should subscribe to our YouTube channel because some of the previous lives will be up on the YouTube channel pretty shortly and you can access those there. You can also sign up for um, our email list and if you become an insider and you're on the email list then you get um, links to the replays after, um, after we do all of these and you also get a heads up about what, um, what's coming, whether we've got a great new question for the Tuesday Night Live or whether we have some upcoming clinics, that kind of thing, um, it's all in there. So I will add the link when I'm done here so that you can um, sign up for that if you're not already on there. So like I said, it's just me tonight and we're talking about my experience with um, postpartum arthritis, but also I wanted to just share some of the advice that I have for you if you are um, in a situation where you're dealing with pain when you're riding or dealing with pain from riding. So you, you are more than welcome to drop questions as we go along. I would love to answer your questions. Um, but let's, uh, let's get right into it. So um, just a little bit of the background. Um, before I, before 2015, when I, um, delivered our daughter Mackenzie. I was riding multiple horses a day. Sometimes I was riding 10 or 12 horses a day. Sometimes I was cleaning, you know, 20, 25 stalls, super, super active, very, very fit and, um, no issues with joint pain or anything like that before in my life, no family history of it. Um, and after after um, my first daughter was born, after my first pregnancy, about three months afterwards, I started experiencing some really intense pain um, in my joints. And I think it started, I wanna say it was around the three month mark. I know there's a real drop in hormones at around that time. And that seemed to be when, um, with both of my pregnancies actually where I started to experience a lot of pain. So I was waking up in the morning and dreading getting out of bed because putting my feet down on the floor um, was so painful. My, my toes, um, 
my ankles, my knees, my hips, my elbows, my fingers, um, everything hurt. Everything, I would be almost in tears. I'd have tears in my eyes walking down the stairs um, in the mornings. And that lasted for me um, from about three months postpartum until it started to ease up after about a year and probably took two years, definitely took two years with both of my pregnancies to really go away. Um, and I didn't know about, um, hi Sally, I didn't know about postpartum arthritis. I didn't know that it was a thing and it didn't seem like I got a lot of good advice about um, what I was experiencing. So I ended up kind of going from my doctor to a specialist, back to my doctor and kind of all over the place. Since sharing, this is interesting, since sharing this experience um, with you guys, I've had a number of people reach out to me and say that they experienced the same thing. Even had one client who said that she was hospitalized for her joint pain um, a few weeks. I think it was a few weeks or maybe it was a few months after she delivered. Um, and I know lots of people who have had pretty severe joint pain after having their babies. So apparently it's reasonably common. It feels like there's not a lot of info about it. Um, maybe I just wasn't able to access the right info, but I didn't get a lot of really good advice about what to do about it or how long it would last. It wasn't until I actually had a gait analysis at Fowler Kennedy Clinic, which is like a sports medicine clinic in the city here. And the doctor there said that my gait was textbook, which was excellent to know, but also that they see this sometimes and it can take two or three years to resolve. So now on the outside of that, it doesn't sound so bad, but being in that position where, um, you know, you're, you're just tears in your eyes, getting out of bed and walking down the stairs and it physically hurting to pick up your kids, not really being able to ride or do very much when you're riding, feeling it the next day, feeling it for several days afterwards was like devastating. That was devastating. Um, for me. So I'm super lucky that, that it wasn't anything worse than that, that I was able to, um, you know, that it resolved on its own and that I'm able to ride without pain now. But I wanted to kind of go back to that for a little bit in case some of you are dealing with pain now, or in case you maybe need a little bit of a kick in the pants to um, take your health more seriously, because that's really what it did for me. What I realized from that experience, <laughs> oh my gosh, hi dear. Um, what I realized from that experience was that one, I was taking my health for granted big time. Two, that riding horses and living on the farm and taking care of horses was harder, a lot harder on my body than what I realized. And three was that I needed to really get serious um, about my own health. Um, and I think that's something that I try to, I try to impart on my students when um, they're here in real life. And I would, I would encourage you to do, you know, I know that this is something that I feel like it's said a lot right now, but it's so, so important is as moms and as women and as dads, as parents, you know, whoever we need to really take our health seriously. And if this, if the symptoms that I was experiencing were happening to one of my kids or were happening to Jesse, I would be pushing for doctors and specialists and, you know, I would have been pushing for all those things. And it took me a lot longer to do those things than, um, it should have, you know, I, I just kind of suffered and, you know, thought I could wait it out or, um, I don't know, was too focused on, you know, taking care of my brand new babies and, and making things work around the farm and stuff before I really took it seriously. So I, I would encourage you to take your health 
seriously, um, that, that you shouldn't have to be experiencing. I mean, I, I'm lucky that mine resolved, but wherever you're at in your health journey, I feel like it's really important for you to take charge of it, I guess is what I'm saying. So I had all of this pain and what was really frustrating for me was that it was a, it was like a flare kind of situation. So it wasn't like I would ride and then I would, and I would feel pain while I was riding or, um, you know, it, it wasn't like how I feel now when I ride, when sometimes I feel like, whoa, I'm really tired. I'm going to be sore tomorrow. It wasn't like that. It was like, I would wake up in the morning with either eight out of 10 pain or 10 out of 10 pain. And the eight out of 10 day, you know, was a good day. And, um, some days I would be able to function a little bit faster in the morning. You know, I, it would only take me five or 10 minutes before I could kind of get moving around. Some days I could get up, um, out of a chair and be, feel fairly comfortable. Those were the days where I usually rode. Um, I would ride and a lot of times if I was riding, it was because I felt fairly good that day. It was a good day. And some days I would get by the next day without feeling too badly. And some days it was terrible. It was really, really painful. Um, so it made it really hard for me to get to know kind of what my limits were. And that's another thing that I think is really important for you if you're experiencing pain right now when you're in the saddle is to try to figure out what your limits are, where, what you can do where you still feel fairly comfortable and you can still kind of um, function the next day. Uh, that was that was something that was really hard for me to do and hard, you know, as, as many of us, you know, it's part of our identity to ride and we don't want to just get on and walk around. We want to do stuff. We want to, you know, I want to go lope. I want to go turn. I want to go stop. I wanted to go. I did learn that was the only limitation that I did, you know, kind of re realize or figure out was that I could, there was no stopping. I could not run down and stop a horse. I could lope a little bit. Um, but I'd be feeling it the next day, maybe for two days afterwards. And, um, that was kind of where my limit was for a while. So it was, I had all of this pain. It was, you know, some days are better than others, but mostly it was pretty awful. And, uh, and then I had this appointment with the, um, with the sports medicine doctor where he said, yeah, your, your gate is, your gate is actually textbook. I'd had blood work at this point. I'd been to several specialists. I had more blood work. I did all of the things. And, um, he said it could be two to three years before this resolves. And so I took a page from, um, the book of Keith Hayes. My dad is, um, Keith Hayes. And my dad is kind of a cool person very cool person actually. And my dad decided, I, get, I think it was actually 10 years ago now, um, that he was going to have, uh, he opted to have a hip replacement. So he wasn't in a situation where he really needed a hip replacement, but he decided to be proactive about his health and get this hip replacement so that he could stay mobile for longer rather than, um, you know, becoming less and less mobile and then needing a hip replacement just to be able to um, perform daily activities. He wanted this hip, hip replacement so that he could keep playing tennis. My dad was a really, really excellent um, soccer player, rugby player, and more recently a tennis player. So he really wanted to get back onto the courts and uh, Play tennis, play tennis competitively. So he opted for this hip replacement. And when he opted for this hip replacement, this is what he did. He set up his recovery. So this is recovering from a hip replacement. Any kind of um, joint replacement can be really, really challenging. And I think probably his knowledge of some of his own clients, um, 
my dad's a spinal cord injury specialist and he also does um, medical legal consulting. So he knows that after an accident, it can be really, really challenging. The recovery can be really challenging, not just physically, but emotionally. So he set himself up to do um, like basically a professional athlete recovery. He set up, he wrote out workouts and he set targets. And his goal was to be able to dance at my best friend's wedding. My best friend was getting married in Mexico that year. Actually, it was in May. Her anniversary was just a couple days ago. And, um, my dad came to the wedding. She's been my friend since I was 10 months old. So like another daughter to him. So his goal was to be able to dance at this wedding. He did all of the rehab. He stuck to it. He even, you know, booked the massages. He had the foam roller. He did all of the things and, um, and he danced, I mean, he danced at my best friend's wedding, like a maniac. So I had kind of this inspiration and I had the inspiration of a, um, a woman who I teach and I'm not going to call her out. She might be watching now. And if, if you are watching, then, you know, give us a heads up or whatever, but I'm not going to call you out and call you out in case you don't want to be called out. But this was a woman who had had a terrible accident, absolutely terrible accident so many of the bones in her body broken and used to ride with some of the really like some of the grandfathers of raining some of the who's who and she was coming for some lessons um with me and she was coming to some of my equitation clinics and it it hurt her to get off that horse so much she was okay getting on she was a trooper through the whole lesson or the whole equitation clinic, but getting off was really painful. I had to lift her leg for her. Um, you know, tears in her eyes. And as she's getting off, she's saying, well, that was great. Thank you so much. So that, you know, that love for riding, that tenacity, that, um, you know, grittiness of that rider and my dad's, um, my dad's rehab plan, I think, kind of inspired me to take my health really seriously and just do all of the things. It was not something that I had to do before. I didn't have to, you know, do stretches or do um, strength exercises or, um, you know, I didn't have to be careful about what I was eating or take anti-inflammatories or anything like that before. And so this was kind of my kick in the pants to take it seriously. Let me do what my dad did and pretend like I was a professional athlete, kind of am, but I was a professional athlete trying to get back to Wimbledon or trying to, like I'm disconnected for a second. There we go. Trying to get back to um, the NFL or something like that. So I started taking it really seriously. Um, and I was concerned that if I just kept going and I kept kept riding, even though it was painful, that I would do damage to my joints. So I started doing what the horses, what we do for the horses. And I started taking glucosamine and chondroitin. And um, I couldn't take a lot of anti-inflammatories while I was still nursing um, both of my girls. I, I chose not to. But as soon as I was done nursing them, then I... Um, I started to get into the anti-inflammatories fairly regularly. I did Epsom salt baths and I did yoga. Um, and the yoga helped me a lot. Well, the combination of all of those things and riding and, and improving my fitness through riding, improving my flexibility um, and alleviating some of my sciatic pain with the yoga made a huge difference. Um, made a huge difference. The pains, you know, subsided on its own eventually, but a lot of those things I have, I, you know, I have carried on with. I even did dietary restrictions. So, um, trying to eliminate inflammation by eliminating gluten, eliminating sugar, um, some of those things, which didn't, didn't really help me Well, eliminating sugar did, but that's really hard. <laughs> Um, it didn't really help me. Um, but I, I, the important thing is, and what I'm trying to, to 
say is that I tried. Um, I tried a lot of things. So, the, like I said, the pain has subsided. The, the postpartum arthritis pain has subsided now. I have kept up with some of those things that I started doing. Um, and I feel like I'm in a good routine now for taking care of myself and doing the things that I need to do to ride at my best. And it's really given me a different perspective as far as my teaching goes, because one, I have a lot more respect for anybody who is riding with pain, with fibromyalgia, with arthritis, with anything, you know, old injuries. It's given me a lot of confidence as far as how far we can push and the things that we can do to get the most out of the rider. Um, and I think it has definitely, um, it's definitely taught me that you can do a lot outside of your riding and, and being on the horse to improve the quality of the time that you spend on the horse, but also how much you're able to actually do. Um, so that's kind of my experience there. If anybody has questions, you can definitely let me know what those are. But basically what my advice is to you, if you're experiencing pain, is to get checked. Um, don't put it off. Get checked. Even right now, even in a time of COVID where we're feeling like we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't be overloading our healthcare system. Um, get checked let the doctors and the nurses be the ones that say that it's not a priority, um, which I don't think they will, but get checked, do the things, go to the specialist, do the blood work. If you're not happy with the results that you're getting, push for more, advocate for yourself, advocate for yourself the way that you would advocate for your child or your husband or your horse. Um, you know, we make the joke all the time about the horses getting the chiropractic care or the massage therapy, um, and the supplements and, you know, all of the things, but we should be doing that, um, for ourselves too, to the extent that we can. The second piece of advice I have is to know your limits, get to know what your limits are and then don't limit yourself by what you feel, um, in that day. So just because that's what your limitation is right now, doesn't mean that that's what your limitation is going to be forever. And that's where I see people getting stuck. I see people where they kind of get to know what they can do and then they put themselves into that box and they don't think that they can, um, that they can get better than that or they can do more than that. And that's a really dangerous spot to be. So don't do that. Make sure that you know what your limitations are, but make a plan for improving those. What can you do? If you can only ride for 20 minutes before you start to experience pain. What can you do outside of your riding um, that will help, you know, that will let you ride for 25 minutes or that will let you go on the trail ride with your friends or let you ride for the full hour in your lesson or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, know your limits, but don't limit yourself. Um, that makes sense. And then the third piece of advice that I have is do all the things. I think some of us as riders and maybe as, um, you know, people who are living busy lifestyles and stuff, we don't make time to do the things that we need to do for ourselves and we need to do them. You know, if we can be doing yoga, if we can be you know, careful about what we're putting into our bodies. If we can come up with a, a Keith Hayes rehab program for returning to Wimbledon, you know, then do it. Let's do it. Um, and stick with it. And when you come up with the things that you want to do, I would suggest stacking them. So try one thing first. If you feel like it's working, keep it, keep doing that thing and then add in something else. And if you think that's working, then keep doing that and add in another thing. You can't try everything all at once because you won't know what's helping and you don't want to give up too early before it starts to really make a difference. And then what happens is once you get kind
kind of a stack of habits, a number of things that you're doing that are helping you, then you have a little bit more flexibility. And if you miss a couple of days of your workouts or you miss a couple of days, um, you know, where you're not as careful about what food you're eating or whatever, then you have a little bit of flexibility there to, um, you know, to rely on all the good habits that you have stacked. So those are the most useful pieces of advice that I have if you're dealing with pain, um, with pain in the saddle. I think, you know, that's not really touching on all of the emotional parts of it. All of the, you know, if you're hurting, then you're also feeling, um, you're feeling discouraged. You're feeling like you want to give up. You're feeling, um, scared it can when you're not feeling comfortable in the saddle it's uh really easy to lose your confidence so i think tonight and the conversation being more about what you can do kind of physically to deal with the pain i think that will help with um, the emotional part as well and then having a good coach a good riding buddy a good support system that's always key Okay, thank you for watching tonight. I don't see any questions here. Thanks for sharing, no problem. Nice to hear me talking so openly about yourself. Yeah, here I am on the internet talking about my pain. <laughs> uh, you didn't know that it was so bad for me. Yeah, some days it was okay. Most of the time it was pretty bad. Thank you for sharing. No problem. Okay, I'm gonna sign out you guys, but I hope that you were able to find something in there that helped you and maybe inspired you to, oh, I got another question in here maybe inspired you to take care of yourself. Oh, I have an anterior pelvic tilt and fibromyalgia. I was having tailbone and SI pain so bad I couldn't even sit at the dinner table. I was dreading riding too, and you're right about the mental side of things. Oh, I, oh, sorry, I lost you here. I ignored both conditions for years until I stepped into the cow horse world and wanted to perform the best I could. I started rehabbing, taking something from my fibro and changed my saddle. I've been basically pain free for some time now and I wish I would have done it sooner. Super important to take care of ourselves like we do our horses. That is great news and thank you for sharing that. Gosh, I'm so glad that you had great results. Painful sitting at the dinner table. Man, that's rough, eh? Good saddle too. That's a good point. Um, having good equipment is key because if you are working against your saddle, oh man, that's one thing that you can do. It's expensive, but that, you know, that's one thing that you can do to make it easier on yourself. Kathy says, well, one thing that I have been doing is playing pickleball every chance I get and perhaps a new horse. As soon as possible, I will be back over. Yes, Kathy, keep up the pickleball and whatever else you can be doing to stay fit and active. And I look forward to seeing you again and hopefully with a new horse. That's awesome. Rose, I find just getting on the horse helps. I felt better when riding. I need to kick my own butt and do my physio homework. Do the physio homework. Rose, I'm speaking to you. <laughs> do it. Find a way to enjoy it too. That's the other thing is like find a way to enjoy it. I started doing, um, I started doing the yoga practice. It was yoga for sciatica. I've shared it a few times, but I can share it again if somebody's interested. Um, I started doing the yoga for sciatica and I would do it at night and it would help me to relax. I find that when I come into the house after I've been teaching, I'm kind of, you know, energized from teaching and it takes me a little while to wind down. So I was doing my yoga in the evening and, um, 
once I had been through the routine a few times, I didn't even have the volume on. So Jesse and I would chat, chat about our day, and I would do a 20 minute yoga routine. It helped me so much. Um, so I don't know what kind of physio you need to do, but maybe you can play some music, get a playlist going that you can listen to while you're doing your physio. Maybe you can um, watch something with horses in it. Maybe you can even get into momentum. You can get into momentum and watch some horse videos while you're doing your physio. Just find a way that you can um, get yourself into it. Get yourself um, enjoying it. Okay, thanks you guys. Thanks for being on live. Thanks for sharing your own experiences. And uh, I hope that you found something helpful in here. I hope that you will take your health seriously and do all the things. Do all the things you can because um, life is short, right? We want to enjoy it. We want to enjoy our time in the saddle. Okay, thanks guys. And um, I will see you next week. I can't remember off the top of my head what the topic is for next week. Oh, tossing the head. Um, tossing the head in the lope departure. So it'll be a little bit more tactical next week. Jesse will be back. We'll give you some tips and uh, I hope you'll join us. Thanks and have a good night.